Hey everybody, this is Ross Turner with Vibrant Agency. Welcome back to this teaching series on the book called The Funnel, 10 Secrets of Extraordinary Church Growth. We are in a video series going through each of the secrets of extraordinary church growth. Really, this is a book that goes completely in depth on using digital marketing, branding, and advertising on the strategies that work in the secular world and how to use those to best suit up your church, your nonprofit, or your ministry to reach new people. This is specifically a, a teaching for churches, but really works for a lot of faith-based uh, organizations as well. And uh, we have spent uh, some time going through the last four secrets. So if you haven't watched those videos, go back and watch those. They really go in depth on marketing, paid ads, funnel ads, kind of the foundational reasons of the mindset behind marketing. And I encourage you to go through that. And in this one, we're going to talk about secret number five, how to dominate on Instagram as a church or a ministry. And uh, by the way, if you don't know me, my name is Ross Turner. I'm the founder of Vibrant Agency. We are a church communications and the nonprofit communications team. So like your creative arts director, your communications director, we want to be that role for your ministry, with your graphics, your social media, your marketing. If you have any questions about that, please hit me up. We have a 30 day free trial. I'd love to uh, have that conversation with you and your ministry. Click on the link on our website, Vibrant Agency. The so secret number five, dominate on Instagram. This chapter of the book says, how do we crush it on Instagram? Social media is always changing. You can't set a standard operating procedure at SOP and just forget it. This is an advantage if you look at it the right way. So as somebody who is in marketing, one of the frustrating things compared to other industries is that we don't get to learn the ropes and then just spend the rest of our life sharpening those tools and executing because the game changes every couple months. The algorithm on Instagram and Facebook changes, new platforms get introduced, new type of content that's becoming viral that, you know, changes all the time. So we don't get to just fine tune. We're constantly having to reinvent and figure out what's working. And that may seem frustrating, but it also is a massive advantage. And the reason it's an advantage is if, for example, we learned that on Instagram, posting a reel on Wednesdays that, you know, showed somebody holding a card that says, join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. became like extremely popular, then every church would just do that and it would become less effective. And so having to stay on the cutting edge allows you the opportunity to get your voice heard um, compared, you know, cutting to the noise of, of all the other people saying the same thing. So being able to sharpen your tools and stay fresh is an advantage, not a disadvantage if you look at it that way. So becoming truly great at social media marketing means never giving in to complacency. It means always being willing to try out the new features and ideas that Instagram polls, uh, puts out. Don't get comfortable, get creative. I would encourage you to not just stick to a rhythm of what kind of content you're gonna put out each week, but I would encourage you to do that on a quarterly basis. So as a church, for example, traditionally it's a very rhythmic. You have Sunday services, you maybe have Wednesday night something, so that, that repeats every week. So that means that you can do a certain thing on Sunday morning, certain thing on Mondays, certain thing maybe on Thursdays, certain thing on Saturdays before church, and you can rinse and repeat that rhythm. But I would encourage you to set that rhythm on a quarterly basis. Hey, on Mondays we're gonna post this, we're gonna do these kind of reels twice a week, on Saturdays we're gonna post this. and and see how that performs and reset it each quarter. So a lot of people, when I do a consultation call with them, they will say, hey, you know, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're thinking about starting a TikTok, which one should we have? Well, the question really isn't, which one should we have? You have to stop viewing social media as a collective thing. You know, it is just a, uh, a medium of delivering content. People on Facebook 
are in a completely different mindset than people that are on Instagram or TikTok. So knowing that, you don't want to just put the same content out on all social media accounts and just see what sticks. It's not that usually somebody's on Facebook and a different kind of person's on Instagram. Most people have all of these accounts, but which one you're opening at certain times of the day, you know, you're in a different mindset. So for example, when you're on Facebook, usually you're going to see higher levels of engagement, commenting back and forth, reading longer form articles, clicking on outbound links. You know, when you're on Instagram, you're more in a scroll mindset. You're looking. And in fact, the, the feed is becoming less and less a thing, more so in stories. People are staying in stories. It's more like the quick break at, at lunch when Facebook is more when you're doing a deeper dive and commenting back and forth, looking at somebody's profile and going deep. Uh, TikTok is usually just like a mind break instead of watching TV. There are different kinds of things. So based on that, you're going to take different kinds of uh, behavior. So if I'm trying to have people sign up for an e-course or something like that, I'm, I'm more likely going to promote that on Facebook when they're, when they're in a mindset to go deeper and take some steps. When I'm looking to build a brand, maybe TikTok or Instagram, where I just want them to consume content is uh, a better place for that. So it's not which one should we be on. You should probably be on all the major ones, but just putting out different kinds of content for that. This chapter is about Instagram. So the content advice that I'm giving you here is mostly related to Instagram. Instagram will most likely, as of right now, be the first impression that your church has to somebody in the community. Now they may drive by your building if you have a, a building where you're in a, a great location, but to really kind of find out more about you in today's day and age, Instagram is most likely your front door. Kind of crazy. So I've encouraged some of the churches that we work with to start to view their Instagram more like a website and less like just a place to spit out pretty pictures. Because of the fact that in today's day and age, when you want to learn if you're interested in a brand, usually you're going to look up the church, you're going to go to the grid, you're going to look through all the images and videos and kind of get a sense of what these people are all about. And then you might scroll up and you might read the bio and you might click on the link if you're interested in maybe some of the featured highlights, maybe look at the most recent story. And that is the same kind of behavior that people used to do when they would just go to your website to try to get the vibe. A lot of times that's, that's like a step three. Instagram is kind of taking that place. So knowing that you want to make sure that you're delivering the content that somebody in that mind space is looking for. So your featured highlights might want to be like about ministries, about our leadership, about our beliefs, or about our service times. I would suggest a tool that I use. If you look at the Vibrant Agency Instagram, as of recording this video, we use a tool called Flow Pages. It's free unless you want to go to a paid, a paid service, but it allows you to have kind of a, a link instead of link tree that kind of pulls up and it's like a, a pseudo website that you know, they don't have to go to your actual website. They don't have to leave Instagram. They can kind of engage with really what they wanted to find out without leaving Instagram, which has a higher engagement rate than asking them to outbound link to your website. View Instagram, your profile in the same kind of like mindset that you would when you're making the homepage of your website. You know, um, one of the things that you can do is you can post things like happy Memorial day, right? That's a great post to have. But go and delete that a week later so that you're keeping the right things on your grid. So when you've got that visitor coming, they're seeing, oh, our kids ministry, oh, worship service time. They're seeing it like they would a homepage. So if you view Instagram that way as a first impression source, then you view your grid, your profile and your bio and your links and your feature highlights and all that stuff in the same mind space as if you were thinking about your homepage. You, it says in the book, you will reach new people just by posting on Instagram, even if they are really great posts. Yes, you heard me correctly. You need, you can go ahead and post a hundred times per day, but it is not going to make people come to your church. 
your Instagram posts are going to be seen mostly by the people who already follow you on Instagram. So a lot of people that I do these Zoom calls with and I take on, you know, churches, they're like, man, how many times, what kind of great stuff do we need to post? We have 3,000 people that follow us on Instagram. I want to reach more people. Well, guess what? If I put the most hilarious, awesome, creative post out on Instagram today, apart from it going real, uh, going viral, most likely it's going to be shown to the people who already follow the church. Like when I open Instagram, I usually don't see a ton of content from people that I don't follow unless it's hitting the Instagram suggested accounts, which, you know, you can't always control that. In reality, you're, you're preaching to the choir. You're posting content for the people who already follow you. So to use social media to reach new people, most of the week, that's really going to be in paid ads. So there are going to be people that are going to find your content and, and stuff like that. But really, um, you don't want to uh, think that by posting great content, that is going to be the source for reaching new people. Really, this is for being sticky. This is for finding people who, through some other means, heard about the church and now are like checking you out. That is why we're posting great content. It's not because this is going to be the thing that they found you from. From Like hashtags are out. It's, it's not going to be about that. It's going to be about making sure that you're being intentional about speaking to somebody who's considering following you. You would be shocked at how many people are like, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I'm the only people who are going to see this. This just doesn't go out to the universe. People have to follow me first to see the content. Yes, that's not always the case. It'll suggest accounts for you. But in general, that's who you're posting to. Next thing in the book, it says, people ask me a lot. What is the ideal quantity to post on Instagram? Like, hey, Ross, how often should we be posting? Well, here's the answer. First and foremost, you cannot uh, have both high, you can't have either high quality or high quantity. It has to be both. A lot of people are like, we need to post three times a day. And so they just start posting Bible verses, whatever. Come on. You have to have high, well thought out, well designed, high quality content and high quantity at the same time. How many times? On Instagram, as of right now, what's working best for me is four to six times per week. A piece of content's being put out. Real post story, four to six times per week, leaning towards six. I, I, I don't think that needs to be excessive like multiple times per day. And I don't think it needs to be less than that. Four to six times per week, make your quarterly rhythm, and that will usually do you well. Well, Ross, what should we post about? What should we be posting about if we want to dominate on Instagram? Well, I will tell you what not to do. And what not to do is what most churches find themselves constantly doing. And that is internal talk. Photos, um that say Sunday was awesome and photos that say Sunday is coming up and then the next week photos that say Sunday was awesome and then the next Friday a post that says Sunday is coming up it's just internal talk all the time and I understand that's you know something that will happen a lot because if it's like what else am I supposed to say we're a church I'm trying to promote church the reality is you need to take the content the rich content of the message and the sermon series that is what you should be talking about on social media the sermon series or the sermon itself is the content pillar that you should be talking about if if you just had a phenomenal message on relationship advice how to have a healthy marriage you've got some great things to post about on tuesday wednesday and thursday three the three points from the message or the you know one key nugget takeaway or a sweet you know clip from the message you don't have to just talk about your church all the time you can talk about the content that's being put out uh every week you have more than enough there's a 45 minute sermon that went out there is more than enough things to say if that was the only thing that you wanted to talk about the content that will help people in their life is much more highly engaged with than just 
posting about the, your next service time. You don't have to sit there as a social media manager or church leader and be trying to reinvent the wheel. Like, what should I possibly say today? That was done on Sunday. Continue the conversation. That is the best thing to, to talk about. I use a tool that our uh, company called Metricool, M-E-T-R-I-C-O-O-L. It's a free tool, but it's how we use um, for analytics for social media. So I, I enter in, in, you know, our Instagram account for the church, uh, Facebook too, TikTok, YouTube, and it will show me every month. I can go and say, show me the best performing post. Show me which uh, Instagram, the top five Instagram best engaged with posts. And what I've found is for a visual, when you have smiling faces, not necessarily in the service, those almost always rank the highest. Now the content of the caption may be about what we're talking about in church and in the services, but the visual is happy people at church getting coffee, hugging each other in the hallways, kids having a great old, great old time outside, whatever. The ones that usually perform the worst are infographics about an upcoming event. They get like little engagement and Instagram starts to not show it to a lot of people. And um, also some of the ones that are the best are the sermon reels. Um, as long as they're short, you want them to be under 30 seconds. So, so keep that in mind. Use a tool. You can use Metricool if you want. I have no affiliation with them, but go and look and find out for yourself which ones each book are performing the best. And will lean into that because that is what your people are commenting on and tagging each other in and love seeing um, smiling faces. The next thing that I wanted to encourage you to think about is we talked just a few minutes ago about how your Instagram is kind of like your website. People go to your Instagram to kind of see what the vibe is of the church. Now, knowing that you can stop viewing your grid as a collection of 70 random disconnected pieces of content and you should be more strategic about it and have some um, design to the grid as a whole there should be intentionality when you thought in an earlier teaching we talked about your mood board and a mood board you know or like a lookbook is a collection of collage of images i view the instagram uh, grid as something that should be intentional. When you're thinking about your content for a quarterly basis, make a design that fits that season or maybe the sermon series you're in and have there be similar color tones, backgrounds, borders, design elements that intertwine so that when that user comes and looks at your Instagram grid as a whole, wow, it all matches, it themes together. There's an, an essence of excellence. But intentionality of brand development now hey ross that seems complicated how do i do that all the time well what you do is you design using temp you know designing using stock photos and and quotes that are yet to be determined just filler words for now and you design about 30 40 um uh squares at a time so one big design broken up into you know individual squares and when it comes time for your Monday rhythm of post a smiling face, you go and you take the one that's using a stock photo now and swap it out for the photos or the carousel photos that you want to use and you post on there. And maybe you post something on a Tuesday that's just a happy you know, Mother's Day or whatever it is. You can go back a week later, delete that so everything all matches up later so that it what lives forever has that intentionality to it, just like you would if it was the home. Uh, another people, another thing that people say is, what about who's going to be posting as a team? Like, is this a staff member? We don't care for a social media manager specifically for the church. Well, usually you're going to have a communications director at your church. You may call it a creative arts director. Ideally, you could start to involve team members to your social media team. And one of the best ways to do that is to have people serve on Sunday mornings. So I love it when a church has Sunday morning uh, stories for day. So many of them, like 30 of them. 
showing the worship team, showing people getting in the hallway, showing clips of the kids. I would love to see Sundays and the whole vibe of the whole Sunday experience be something that a team of volunteers, maybe one person, they take turns. You equip that person with some tools to walk around during service on Sunday from beginning the, of rehearsal to like as people are leaving and their job is to post stories all day long of the Sunday morning vibe. Give, buy a, a stabilizer on Instagram, maybe a mic, let them go crazy. Um, give them some guidance as far as here's what to post, here's what not to post, here's our filters that we use for, for photos, here's whatever, give them some guidelines, right? But then let them be in the audience, you know, getting some good moments from the sermon. Let them show people during worship. Let them show people silent, you know, smiling. Let them show the worship team practice beforehand, get people excited. Those stories on Sundays get seen by a lot of people, especially some of the people that are there on Sunday because they want to see if they made it on the story. All you have to do is have a volunteer serve once a month, give them the tools that are needed, have them walk around with a phone, let them post it right there, give them an admin access on Metrical so they can post the stories themselves or give them a phone that's logged into Instagram so you don't have to have random people with the username and the password. Give them the tools and have them, there, there's no wrong answer. Like if you don't like one of the stories they posted, take it down. Um, but having it be an expectation that on Sundays, that's celebrated. What happens in person on Sundays is celebrated with a lot of stories. That will be awesome. Another tip to dominate on Instagram is don't rely solely on fresh content at all times. Have a Dropbox folder that has um, sermon and baptism and event things that were really special moments that happened maybe six months or a year ago or whatever. And don't be afraid to post those. Those throwback type pieces of content sometimes outperform the fresh content. One of the, the ministries that's really, really great at this is a guy who not, you know, not a lot of people like, but Mark Driscoll. He will post things on Instagram. Um, and, and this is not uh, saying anything positive or negative about Mark Driscoll. I'm just stating their strategy on Instagram is that he will post teaching segments from years ago. And he'll post it that just happens to be of his heart or relevant for today. And they just had that in Dropbox. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Post things that you've posted before that have fresh life that maybe somebody needed to hear today. Have a Dropbox folder that are things that you are good posting once a year. And all of a sudden, you know, you blink twice, you'll have 200 pieces of content in there that you can just throw up there. Like, it's very helpful to do and it will give you great content. Um, here's the next thing. How do we get more and better photos each week? I am constantly surprised at how many churches that are medium sized have a difficult time getting photos. Photos are, are a lot of times the base content pillars for the visuals of what performs the best on Instagram. So you need to have photos. It doesn't need to be that complicated. Some people overcomplicate it, like we need a photographer or two every Sunday and we need to only post things that happened that Sunday. Okay, you know, for some that's a fit. I think a balance, because that can be overcomplicated. I think a balance is to do it monthly. Have somebody come once a month and take a hundred shots. And then we can live off those hundred shots for once a month. Make sure that they're there for special things like baptisms or graduation or something big, right? But it, in general, once a month is usually good enough. A good way to do it because people want to serve. Make there be a spot on your website or once a month, you know, maybe once a quarter, do an Instagram story. Like if you'd like to serve, let us know. What you should have is you should have a team that you can have somebody who's a senior photographer and maybe somebody who's a junior shadow them. And ideally somebody shouldn't have to be asked to serve more than once a month, I've found. And have a church uh, owned camera or if they want to bring their own camera, Make it easy on them that they don't have to edit the photos. Just take the photos, put them in Dropbox. If they want to edit it themselves, that they can, but usually we should have our own presets in Lightroom so that the same, the similar color tones and, uh, and everything like that is consistent. 
give them a Dropbox folder, show them on your lookbook what kind of shots you're looking for, and let them uh, go get tons and tons of them. It will be a big ask to then make them go home and edit the photos and then upload them. Really, uh, a staff member or a comms director can take care of that. Just ask them to take the photos once a month, coach them, give them, empower them to have a junior uh, so that they can train them and have that system be just like any other serve. Last thing I want to talk about is do we schedule the lead pastor's Instagram content as well? Do we schedule the lead pastor's content as well, just like the church's content? I have been so surprised over the years of doing this at how the content that's posted from the lead pastor's account will constantly outperform the church's content. People are significantly more interested in engaging in engaging with the content from a person than a brand. If you look at, for example, Life Church, phenomenal, one of the biggest churches in America, maybe the biggest one if you add all the campuses. They have like six, seven hundred thousand followers on Instagram. But if you look at Craig Groeschel, he has pushing 1.5 million followers on Instagram. His content outperforms the church's content most of the time. The reason is people are more interested in humans than they are with brands. They're more interested in being associated or following a person than they are with a brand. I would strongly suggest that some of your content that you plan on posting, you put on the lead pastor's account, have that be connected to Metrical as well. Tested on, on Metrical, which ones are performing better on his account or her account versus the church account. Do that in addition to the content that you're posting on Instagram or the church. I promise you that they are almost one in the same. The church Instagram account and the pastor's Instagram account, they're not separate things to be considered like separate you know entities. People are following the leader of the church and they're, they're just so intertwined that you have to view those as managed by the church team and not just the church account. Um, I hope that you guys have gotten something from this. This mindset and the tip that I just outlined is how you dominate on Instagram. You constantly need to be reinventing on a quarterly basis what's working. You need to use a tool like Metricool to actually do the stats of how you're doing, how you're performing. You need to um, monitor the church's account and the lead pastor's account. You need to have a team of people so you have boots on the ground on Sundays. You need to strategize about photographers. You need to find out what pieces of content are working and you need to use the content from your sermons to be the basis for your content pillar. Uh, I hope that this has helped you. The next chapter is going to be awesome. We're going to talk about the other channels and the nuances that make them successful for your church, for your ministry. As always, if you have any questions, contact me or any of us at Vibrant Agency and we'd love to help and get connected. Hope this has helped. God bless you. See you in the next video.